I assume you are familiar with Pascal's triangle. You know the binomial theorem, how it counts subsets of sets and calculates probabilities. Now, I introduce you to the binomial theorem as a portal to your Mine. An entryway to the limits of your imagination, the kinds of choices that you can make. I want to show you the learning paths in mathematics that lead up to bot periodicity, an eightfold framework which organizes the ways of choosing subspaces of vector spaces. I invite you to join the Math for Wisdom community, our email discussion group, and in particular, our study group for the mathematics of the divisions of everything, the cognitive frameworks, which are the context for existence, participation, knowledge, and other basic matters. Our intellectual expedition includes those who are learning and teaching high school math as well as those who are investigating advanced mathematics, algebraic topology, Lie theory, and quantum physics. We want to appreciate and communicate the subtle but crucial psychological distinctions that even a child faces. We let a child choose. Do you want a carrot or an apple? And we can frame such questions very differently. Would you like an apple? Yes or no? Would you like a carrot? Yes or no? Would you like a grape? Yes or no? Our goal is to show that beyond the math on paper, there is math in our minds, which reflects a more basic language of wisdom. Our greater goal beyond that is to show how it is whimsical and fun to develop a community of independent thinkers who are discovering this shared language. Please join us for this philosophical, mathematical, and theatrical adventure from binomial theorem to bot periodicity. Binomial theorem is watching you. You have a choice between two types of choices. Are you responding this way or that way? Or are you observing that there is a response or not? The binomial theorem is observing you. That is math for wisdom. The binomial theorem is a portal. I did not realize this at first. I only saw how it encoded choices heads or tails, have a girl or have a boy, step left or step right. But then one day I had to make my own choice. I was the observer. I was shopping for clothes. That was when the portal opened. What do you want to buy, Andreas? Whoa, green. I don't know. I, I can't picture myself wearing this, but I can't picture myself passing this up. You should buy it. It'll add a dimension to your character. You think so? Color is a dimension, folks. 
Every choice adds a dimension. Every choice adds a dimension. If I chose not to choose this, not this, not that, not that, but I chose this. Don't overthink it. I did overthink it. I grew willful, deliberate, conscious. I imagined the spirit of math offering me a new kind of choice. I could take it or leave it. Do we choose caramel cold brew or not? Do we choose cookies and cream or not? Do we choose mountain blackberry? Or not. The spirit of math was liberating me. No longer was I trapped in the choices imposed on me, paper or plastic, friend or foe, positive or negative, good or bad. No, I could carve up space and time myself in terms of my own choices, my own flavors. I could choose to have three of the flavors or two of the flavors or just one of the flavors, or no flavors at all. I was not the observed. I was the observer. Ever since I got this shirt, I just feel like Time and space are carving up. Like sometimes I think, hey, nothing's happening. Okay. Okay, why do I need to know that? And then it's like nothing's happening. And then then it's like wait, 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 something happened. Something is something is looking through me. You know, something is happening in the universe that's not supposed to, that, 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 that is just supposed to be happening. Do you understand what I'm talking about? What's happening there? It's happening. It's happening. And now it's not happening, is it? It's not happening. On every page of every book, on every shelf of every bookstore, I had discovered the heart of the matter in the depths of mathematics, of logic, was semiotics, the study of signs. When we oppose two symbols, plus and minus, then we can exchange their meanings, for they are simply symbols, thus semiotically equivalent. But we can oppose a symbol with the lack of a symbol, in which case we cannot exchange their meanings. What will you read about math? Will you read this book? Or will you not? Will you read this book? Or will you not? Will you read this book?
or will you not? Will you read everything or will you just read some things, some relevant things and everything else you will leave unread. Everything else will be similar in that it is all unread. It is all the same unread book. As an observer, I was staring into the all-encompassing void. For me, each being came along with its non-being, but all non-beings were the same lack of being, the same non-creature, the same lack of a symbol, the same blankness on the page of life. What is a vertex? A vertex is a being. Is this real or is it not? Does this exist or does it not? Does this matter or does it not? Are you real or are you not? I was beginning to understand that the same numbers could encode not just different meanings, but different existential circumstances. The choice between positive and negative was semantic. A choice between words or labels or symbols. I could switch the meaning of plus and minus on account of their symmetry. Whereas the choice between to be or not to be. There exists or there does not exist was of a different nature, not semantic, but syntactic, not symmetric, but asymmetric. Choosing all was absolutely different from choosing none. Knowing everything was absolutely different from knowing nothing. The observer was fundamentally different from the observed. The binomial theorem was a portal revealing to me that I was an observer and nature itself could be an observer and observe itself, as in the paradox of quantum physics, the collapse of the wave function. Could the spirit of math reveal absolute truth? I have the source code for the entire universe, real and imaginary. It is my hope and my purpose to realize all of the absolute truths that I hold. I believe in a language of wisdom, a language of cognitive frameworks more basic than math or logic. I will delve deeper with friends to bring light to the depths of imagination, the walls of our minds, our hearts, our wills that we contemplated in our mother's wombs. I seek the mind, the heart, the will of God, that I might apply myself fully. But what phantom is this? Zoltar! Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, leaving comments, and supporting Math for Wisdom through Patreon. 
We invite you to join our Math for Wisdom email discussion group and participate in our study group for the math of the divisions of everything. I am Andrus Kulikowskas, and this is Math for Wisdom.